Good day, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and also students of the Vilnius University. Today I would like to give you a short intro in, uh, introduction to the effects of the Black Death on medieval animal livestock by means of a common medieval livestock. And uh, why are we doing this? Because if something affected the people, then this affected maybe the uh, domesticated animals too. So, the obligatory introduction. The Black Death was a uh, uh, devastating disaster. It was one of the greatest disasters in European history. And uh, in a century marked by several crises, the Black Death seems to have been the greatest of all, causing the demise of millions, with an estimated death rate between 10 and 50 percent. And Black Death had a significant impact on the medieval society, with various far-reaching socio-economic implications. In the first half of the 14th century, several catastrophic events preceded the Black Death. They all represent what can be labelled as the late medieval crisis. This, those smaller crises had a common source, namely the constant climatic instability, which had a critical impact on the grain production, which led to the Great Famine. At the same time, a cattle murren occurred across Europe. As those animals were important not only for the nutrition of the population, but also for the agriculture and the trade and also the traction, serious economic implications should be estimated. Other natural disasters like the Magdalenian flood in uh, Central Europe in July 1342 <coughs> had also serious uh, consequences. This torrential rain rainfall led to an alleviation of nutrients of the fertile soil, which had, again, a serious impact on the agriculture. And due to food deprivation and malnutrition, the remaining population was weakened. And this uh, uh, made it easy for the Black Death to, to spread and wipe millions out. Therefore, it is coherent to assume that the plague enforced the already existed problems, operating like some sort of a catalyst or multiplicator. So, summing up what we know about the 14th century, we can say that the landscape and furthermore the agriculture was profoundly affected. Abandoned farmlands turned into pastures, and due to the many successive waves of plagues, a period of reforestation is also evident in the pollen record. And since there is a mutual relation between agriculture and animal husbandry, one must ask himself, can we use through archaeology to describe a remote event like the Black Death or the late medieval crisis. So this presentation will be split into two sections, two parts. In the first part, we will take a look on the bigger picture and explore supra-regional trends on animal livestock. And in the second part, I will present two case studies. In order to detect region-specific trends, the different sites were assigned to four geographical regions, region 1 in the south, region 2, 3 and 4. And as you can see, every region is, all, is also further divided. In that way, we can uh, make intra-regional comparisons, that means within the borders of a region, example only for region 2, as well as uh, supra-regional, that means between the different regions. And here we can also see the timeline of the study. We have four main phases, A, B, C, and D, uh, covering the period 800 to 1600. Phase A represents the situation before the Black Death. The next one, phase B, is dated in the immediate aftermath of the Black Death, of the first uh, Black Wave in the late medieval ages, and represents the short-term effects, consequences, of the plague. The subsequent phase C stands for the long-term consequences, if any. So, part of the zoo archaeological analysis were the four more important livestock animals of the medieval ages. 
I'm pretty sure you can recognize all of them, so here you have it. <laughs> and in order to detect any changes, several methods were applied, like the reconstruction of the wither's height, so how big was an animal, how high was it, the shape analysis, so the exterior of the animal, um, the robustness, and so on. Size analysis, the weather's height is actually a part of a size analysis. Mixture analysis, in order to detect some groups in the population, so if we have males, females, uh, if we have castrates, if we have uh, different, um, um, different types of animal, and so on. And we also have the so-called logarithm logarithm size index. And uh, today I would, I would like to concentrate exclusively on the cattle and this logarithm size index technique. So how does a zoo archaeologist work? We are data gatherers, which means we record the number of the animal bones, we identify and also their weight, so though we might find out the nutritional and also economical importance of the livestock animals. Whenever possible, we also record the measurements of the bones themselves. Here we see the skull of a pig, for example, and you can see how we're doing this. And this is actually the, uh, the optimal case. Uh, in most of the cases, we have just pieces, fragments of the bones. Uh, very rarely we have the whole skull. So uh, from a bone, we, we may have just one or two measurements or maybe also nothing at all. And those are our primary data we're gathering. And we can gather those data also on the site. And uh, from the primary data, we can draw the secondary data, like the minimum number of individuals, so um, the water height, um, the logarithm size index, and so on and so forth. So, and uh, how does this uh, logarithm size index works? We need a standard individual, individual. In this case, we have here a sheep. Of course, I have another one for the cattle. I have a cattle. And uh, this individual is my baseline. And uh, I do take the measurements from the uh, archaeological bones we've excavated. And uh, we can see in the box and whisker graphic, if we have a positive value, then the archaeological specimens were, let's say, bigger from our baseline. If it's negative, then it was smaller. And by the way, this box and whisker graphic, it was made by me three years ago, and this really awful. It's outstanding awful. And uh, let's go to the first section, the first part, the bigger picture. We have uh, a major issue in uh, intra-regional approach, in uh, the, uh, it is the lack of sufficient material from phase B, from the time uh, from the period 1350 to 1400, which is pretty important. So, in this case, for the bigger picture, we we need a substitute, and this substitute is the 14th century, so the period 1300 to 1400, or phase A4 to B. And uh, the North German plain which represents roughly North Germany, is at the moment the only region where an intra-regional comparison of urban sites can be conducted, because it's, uh, it's uh, really important to, to distinguish the different settlement types. Cities, castles, clusters, um, villages, ports, and so on and so forth. And it seems that not until the 16th century, that would be phase D at the right, uh, the cattle increased significantly in size, or let's just say in robustness. <clears throat> it cannot entirely exclude it that a significant robustness increase or occurred already in the 15th century, but at the moment there isn't enough data to support this assumption. So this increase, it is, um, it is uh, something uh, positive actually. It's, it's, it's a positive impact. It's a negative impact, but it has nothing to do with the Black Death because we're in the 16th, 16th century. So it seems that uh, actually nothing happens. But let's take a look on two case studies. In order to better understand short-term effects of the Black Death, case studies are required. 
In the second part of this presentation, I will present you two case studies. And the key feature of both sides is the presence of, of phase B, which can show the short-term effects of the Black Death on animal livestock. And uh, the first site is the High Cathedral of Saints Peter and Mary in the city of Cologne. The city lies on both sides of the river Rhine in the southeast part of the North German Plain. The North German Plain is the so-called region number four. It is a fortunate <coughs> circumstance that several short-term phases can be detec detected, including phase B. And as you can see between the phases A4 on the left and B in the middle, there is a significant robustness decrease. So we have some kind of a negative impact here. And the material of phase B is actually dating pretty much around 1360, which places it right in the immediate aftermath of the first uh, wave of plague in the city of Colonia. And as you can see in phase C, the cattle remains as small as in phase B. The second uh, site is the city of Constance, located at the western end of Lake Constance. Geographically speaking, it belongs to the Alpine Forelands. Uh, for, uh, in, uh, to the Alpine Forland. Similarly to the Cologne Cathedral, phase B is also present. And also, similarly to the Con Cologne Cathedral, there is again a robustness decrease. So again, a negative impact. There is, however, a difference. The decrease is only for phase C, uh, for, for the 15th century, statistically significant. And in phase B, we can observe merely a tendency. That could mean that the, that the timing of the same phenomenon, namely this decrease, is different from both, uh, for both sides. We can summarize the results as follows. In the North German Plain, it is possible to detect a general trend, a general trend in the cities. There is an increase after 1400 or maybe after 1500. So it would seem that the Black Death, or the late medieval crisis, if you prefer, hadn't any effect on the cattle, on the robustness of the cattle, on the shape of the cattle. But the material of, uh, of the Cologne Cathedral shows otherwise. After 1300, there is a decrease. The situation in South Germany, in the Alpine Foreland, is similar, is similar although we cannot at the moment reconstruct general trends because the lack of sufficient material. But pay, uh, based on the already existing material, there is also the tendency for a robustness increase after 1400 or 1500. But in the seat of Constance, again, we can observe a similar pattern like in the seat of Colonia, namely a decrease. And how, uh, however, this decrease is happening after 1350. Interesting enough, in both sides, the cattle remains in the subsequent phase C as small as in phase B, as I already said. Overall, we can conclude that in the immediate aftermath of the Black Death, the conditions in cattle husbandry changed. The robustness decrease, which is evident in both sides, was of a short-term nature, since the cattle in phase C is as small as in phase B. So could it be that after the initial shock, the medieval population was able to stabilize the negative effects? About the why, one can only speculate. This change reflects most likely the effects of a shortage of fodder, since the society was not able to respond rapidly to the agra agrarian crisis. In addition to that, we must also consider poor, respectively ignorant management. Also, it was possible in the next decades to stabilize the negative effects of the Black Death. Many years passed before a substantial growth of the cattle took place, as it is evident in this super regional study. Here I have this uh, nice picture, uh, which shows two pigs, not cattle, I know. But uh, um, the people in this um, museum, back in the 10s or 20s, I think it, it was, uh, did the same experiments also with cattle and the, um, and the effects of starvation, uh, of starvation are actually pretty si similar. In order to better evaluate the results of the zoo archaeological study, 
and interdisciplinary approach, which includes paleobotanical, anthropological, historical analysis is necessary. And finally, I would like to stress the importance of this phase B, of this uh, short phase after the first uh, plague wave. In order to better understand the effects of such an extra extraordinary event like the Black Death, short phases should be studied. This is, of course, in most of the cases not possible, either because the zoo archaeological material isn't sufficient or because the dating isn't accurate enough. And uh, since the Black Death must be considered to have, been, to have been a part of the late medieval crisis, the division of the time span from 1200 to 15 or maybe also 1600 in short term phases of, let's say, 50 years is appropriate. In that way, it will be possible to separate the effects of the Catamaran, the Great Famine, or whatever, from those of the Black Death. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention.